Hello, this video is Introduction to Adaptive Cards, and it's part of the Microsoft 365 Patterns and Practices Teams Development Series. Adaptive cards are used in Teams bots and messaging extensions and can even be incorporated into tabs if you wish. So they're useful throughout Teams development, and by watching this video, you'll learn what adaptive cards are, how to make and use them, how to use adaptive card templates, and how to find a template using the adaptive card service. So let's dig in. So let me ask, have you ever used an adaptive card? Maybe you've used one and didn't even know it. For example, this actionable message in Outlook is actually an adaptive card. You can even capture information from the user. No way I'm improving this one. Here in Windows 10, the history of programs that you've run recently is called the Timeline. Those are adaptive cards too. And in Microsoft Teams, bots and messaging extensions can use adaptive cards. Here a bot is responding with a card. I can click the card to get more information or even open a little form that I would fill out right inside the Teams conversation. The problem addressed by adaptive cards is an old one. One application wants to display some data and maybe some functionality inside of another application. The traditional approach to this was fairly heavy weight. Both applications run in their entirety, and the embedded application gets to display its user interface inside of the hosting application. One example of this is traditional Microsoft Office object linking and embedding, although these days it's more often done using web technology with a hosted browser or iframe displaying the embedded application. That's how Teams tabs work. A lighter weight alternative is to embed code and HTML from the embedded application into the hosting application. This is lighter weight and allows more applications to be embedded, such as SharePoint Framework web parts, or even JS Link and display templates. Adaptive cards provide an even lighter weight alternative that requires less coordination between the embedded application and the hosting application, and it also works across different types of applications. Adaptive cards are flexible enough to cover most needs while giving the hosting application strong control over style and security. Adaptive cards are open source. They blend natively into any experience. The Adaptive Card SDK works in Android, iOS, JavaScript, WPF, and Universal Windows applications, and it renders the Adaptive Cards natively so that they blend right in with the application. Adaptive Cards also provide reusable templates and a template service, which I'll show you in just a moment. So let me show you a demo. So I'm going to start by showing you the Adaptive Card Designer and some samples. Then I'll show you some adaptive cards embedded in a web page, and I'll also show you how to use the adaptive cards template service. Now I'm going to start at a website called adaptivecards.io. This is where all the documentation, samples, and the designer, as well as the blog and other material is kept. Let's go right into the samples and look at some examples. So as you can see, I can pick any one of these examples and it will display the adaptive card over here on the far right. In the middle you can see the JSON that makes up the adaptive card. So this is just JSON, JavaScript Object Model Code, explaining the exact structure of the card. You'll find that the card contains um, the structure and the data, but not the way of displaying it. The style of rendering the card is actually controlled by the host, and I'll show that more clearly in a minute. Something that's new, and I would encourage you to use, even though it's in preview, is adaptive card templating. So the challenge here is that the data is embedded right into the JSON for the adaptive card. By using templating, I can separate out the data from the template, and you can see that I'm using these little, or that somebody's using these little squigglies to reference objects inside of the data JSON. 
Adaptive cards can have actions. So I can click on this, and the actions are actually determined by the um, hosting application. Another thing to check out is the Adaptive Card Designer, and this really shows how Adaptive Cards are adaptive. For instance, let me open a sample, and what I'll do is just show you the different host applications that can be simulated inside the designer. So for example, this is what the Adaptive Card looks like inside the Bot Framework web chat client. This is what it looks like inside of Microsoft Teams if the dark theme is on. Here's Teams with a light theme. This is what it would look like in an Outlook actionable message, etc., etc. So you can see that the adaptive card does not get to decide on the colors and the fonts and the styles. That's actually controlled by the hosting application. And that's why the adaptive cards blend in so perfectly with the hosting application itself. I can also come in here and edit the card, of course, and put some new data on the card if I wish. So ultimately, I want to show you how to use adaptive cards inside of Microsoft Teams. But it's a little bit more of a complex uh, topic because it's going to involve bots and messaging extensions and other things. So let's just focus on just the adaptive cards part by looking at an example in an ordinary web browser. And if you want to follow along, just go to bit.ly slash ac templates one. It'll bring you to the same example inside of Plunker. So it's pretty simple. If I run it, it'll ask me for my zip code. If I type in a location, I'll get back the weather inside of that location. So let's see how it works. Here inside of my script, I can, uh, let me make a little more room here. Here inside of my script, when I click the button, I call lookup. And it's going to go and get the zip code out of that text box and build the URL to call open weather map. And then it's going to get the card using um, template.json, which is here in my project. And um, so that's actually a very short URL, actually. And the data URL um, up here of my open weather map, and it's going to pull both of those uh, pieces of data in. And um, then it's going to render a card and give me back a car, an adaptive card that I can render and put inside of the host element on my web page. So let's see how render card works. It's going to do a lot of fetching, right? First, it's going to get the template, which is here, and turn that into an object, into a JSON object. And then I'm going to pull in my data. And then I will um, do a little bit of conversion of, of the data from Open Weather Map, I have to change the uh, time format. And now I've got the template and the data both in JSON objects, so what are, or just JavaScript objects. So what I can do is now use the Adaptive Card Template SDK um, to apply and bind the data to the template. So I get my template and my evaluation context, um, set the data to be the root of the evaluation context, and I expand the template, which gives me back the JSON for the card with the data already plugged in. Then on line uh, 40, I can actually create the adaptive card and uh, load the expanded template, which is the finished um, JSON, right into there, and return that to the lookup function for rendering. So let's look at the data. Here's some sample data. Uh, it's not the current weather, but it was the weather at one point. And you can see this is just what comes back um, from Open Weather Map. So for instance, uh, notice that there's a name uh, here, which is the name of the city. So if I go to the template, this is the adaptive card. And um, notice that the things in here are actually kind of more functional, like I'm going to have a text block, okay? It's going to be a large text block. I don't get to say the font or anything like that, but I do get to say a little bit about it. And then see here, I'm binding to the name 
from that um, from the data that I just showed you. And everything else just kind of binds in from there. Here I'm putting in kind of creating the icon URL uh, out of the some data that was inside of the um, payload that came back from Open Weather Maps. And that's that's it. So it's fairly simple. Now if you want to go in a little bit deeper on this, you might want to look at some other templates that are up here on this GitHub repo, Adaptive Cards Templates. Now what's nice about these is they're not only samples, but they're also um, available through the Adaptive Card service. So you can use these in your solutions by referencing them from the service, or you can even look up the template based on the shape of the data that you have. So here are all the templates. The idea here is this is um, not yet completely open source, but the idea here is that eventually everything, um, this whole thing will be open source and you'll be able to uh, put your own data structures inside of here and have the rendering for your objects from any application. So um, let's look for an example. Here's the user profile from the Microsoft Graph. And so there's the template for that up in the service. So what I'm going to do is actually go into the graph and let me use Postman to grab my own user profile. So I'll grab that, put it on the clipboard. And I'm going to go to another plunker. So this is uh, bit.ly slash AC templates two. And this is going to show how to call the uh, template service. And just based on the shape of this, of this H of this JSON, excuse me, it's going to go and find a template that can render it and then actually apply the template um, just like I did before. So there it works. It's pretty amazing. So if you look at this, it's not that different than before, except I don't have a template.json, right? Instead, what I'm doing is I'm calling the find service, the adaptive cards find service, and I'm posting the data in there that I want to find a template for. Now, in real life, I would strip all of the personal information, all of the data out of here, and just send in an empty um, shell of the data to get the template, and then I would have... Um, the data, of course, I have to bind the data that has the real data in it uh, in order to get it to show up on the card. But you don't really have to send any of your data up to the service. So in summary, adaptive cards are snippets of interactive content from one application that appear in a hosting application. Microsoft Teams and Outlook are both examples of hosting applications. And really, it could be any web page running JavaScript or any native application using the Adaptive Cards SDK for Android, iOS, WPF, or UWP. Adaptive Cards are JSON structures, and there's a templating library that allows data binding if you wish, and an Adaptive Card service that allows finding and using card templates. You can find all the information on Adaptive Cards up at the Adaptive Cards site, https colon adaptivecards.io. The, the bot code that was shown in the demonstration is at aka.ms slash consultingbot. If you like this video, please follow this YouTube channel at aka.ms slash sppnpvideos. You can also follow me at the links shown. That's all for this time, and thanks for watching.